Welcome to Lockbox, a podcast providing real estate professionals with action items for success. My name is Jeffrey Broger, and I'm going to be your host. I'm the founder of two real estate marketing and tech companies, Steezy.Digital and RealNurture.io. In this podcast, you'll learn from top 1% real estate and mortgage brokers the exact secrets to their success. Welcome to Lockbox. Welcome to Lockbox. My name is Jeffrey Broger, and I am here today with Mark Podolsky. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. Jeffrey, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So why don't you start off, tell our listeners who you are and where you're from. Sure. I'm a professional land investor. I've been flipping dirt since 2000, 2001, full-time, and I live in Phoenix, Arizona. Love it. So very curious about land flipping. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll dive into that during this episode, but I would love to learn what got you into the industry. Like, what was your first experience where you were like, whoa, real estate is pretty interesting. You know, I kind of stumbled into it. So I used to be a miserable micromanaged 45 minute commute to work and back investment banker, specializing in mergers and acquisitions with private equity groups. And Jeffrey, it got so bad for me. I wouldn't get the Sunday blues anticipating Monday coming around. I'd get the Friday blues anticipating the weekend going by really fast and having to be back at work on Monday. So my firm hires this guy and he's telling me that as a side hustle, he's buying up raw land, pennies on the dollar. He's flipping them online and he's making a 300% return on his money. Well, I'm looking at companies all day long and a great company, great has 15% EBITDA margins or free cash flow. Average companies, 10%. I'm looking at companies all day long, less than 10%. So I don't believe them. I've got three grand saved up for car repairs. I go to New Mexico with them. I do exactly what he tells me to do. I buy 10 half acre parcels at average price of $300 each. I flip them and they all sell for an average price of $1,200 each, 300% it worked. So I took all that money, went to another auction. And this is you know in Arizona. And there's no one in the room. It's 2000. I'm buying lots and acres for nothing. And I sold all that property. I made over $90,000 cash. So I go to my wife. I'm like, honey, I'm going to quit my job, become a full-time <laughs> land investor. She's pregnant. And she's like, absolutely not. So I said, okay. So it took me about 18 months for the land investing income to exceed the investment banking income. And then I quit. And I've been doing it full-time ever since. Wow. What a great story. I love that. So with land flipping, it's very interesting to me because I've been working in the real estate world for quite a while. I first inherited a property at 16. My sisters and I buried it throughout my 20s, rented it out. I bought out my sisters throughout my 20s and actually just sold it this last year, kind of at the peak of everything, made a killing and, and did really well. And that was my first experience being an investor on the residential side, uh, just you know managing that one unit and seeing the power of it. And then in my mid 20s, I created a, a real estate marketing agency. And now today I am uh, both of those things, investor and marketer, but also I have my license on the commercial side, focusing on multifamily. But what I've realized through that process is houses and properties depreciate. In fact, you write it off on your taxes, right? You, depre- you have a depreciation schedule, but the land is what is appreciating. So I always thought like, wow, what, what an interesting concept. And uh, I was actually a part of a TV show a while back called Real Men of Real Estate. And one of the guys did land flips in East San Diego. And I was like, this is interesting, right? But go buy raw yeah. land get it through zoning, maybe like have it, you know, you know, ha- have it all, you know, set up and then sell it to a developer. So uh, I'm really curious to, to dive into this, like really grateful to have you on the show and uh, would love to learn more. So nowadays, when you mentioned back then there weren't anyone in, you know, no one in the room, you're picking stuff up for pennies. Is that still the same landscape? Like it's pretty non-competitive or, or ha- has it gotten much more competitive nowadays? You know, auctions are more competitive than they were. So, you know, if you want, I'll walk you through exactly what I do and how I Please. do it. Yeah. Okay. So, Jeffrey, where do, exactly do you live? Huntington Beach, California. Huntington Beach, California. Okay. So, too bad for you. You've lost all complaining privileges. Anyways, I digress. So, I'm going to assume you own 10 acres of raw land in Texas and you owe $200 in back taxes. So, you're essentially advertising two important things to me. Number one, you have no emotional attachment to that raw land. 
here in California, the properties in Texas. And number two, you're financially distressed in some weird way. Because when we don't pay for things, we don't value them in the same way. You even paid your property taxes. As a result, the county treasurer keeps sending you notices saying, Jeffrey, don't pay your taxes. You're going to lose that property to a tax lien or tax deed investor. So all I'm going to do is look at the comparable sales on your parcel of land in Texas for the last 12 to 18 months. I'm going to take the lowest comparable sale. Let's make it easy math. Let's say it's $10,000. I'm going to divide by four, and that's going to get me what Warren Buffett would call a 300% margin of safety. So I'm going to send you an actual offer on your parcel for $2,500. Now, you accept it because for you, $2,500 is better than nothing. In reality, three to 5% of the people accept my quote unquote top dollar offer, but now you've accepted it. Now, once you've accepted it, I have to go through due diligence or in-depth research. I have to confirm you still own the property. I have to confirm back taxes are only $200. I have to make sure there's been no breaks in the chain of title. There's no liens or encumbrances. I want to know what, you know, what the restrictions are. So I've got this whole big checklist for my due diligence. I outsource that to my team in the Philippines for about 11 bucks, they're connected to an American title company. They get me the plat maps, the aerial maps, the satellite maps, everything I'm going to need for my buyer. Now, if I'm investing 5,000 or more, I'll just close traditionally through a title company. I won't take that risk. But 2,500 bucks, I'll, I'll use my team. So now everything checks out. I buy the property from you for $2,500. I'm going to sell this property 30 days or less. And I'm going to make a cash flow just like your rental home. So I have a built-in best buyer. Do you know who it is? Mm, Amazon. Nope. No. I don't know. There's the neighbors. The neighbors. So I'm going to send out neighbor letters saying, hey, here's your opportunity. Protect your privacy. Protect your views. Know your neighbor. So oftentimes the neighbors will buy it. Now, if they pass, I'll go to my buyer's list. My buyer's list passes and I go to a little website you may have never heard of. It's called Craigslist. It's the 10th most trafficked website in the United States. I'll go to another one. I know you've heard of this one. It's called Meta, Facebook, buy, sell groups in the marketplace. And then I'll go to Lands, landmoto.com, land and farm, landandfarm.com, landsofamerica.com, landflip.com, landhub.com, landcentury.com. These are platforms where people buy and sell raw land. But the magic happens in my pricing. So all yes. I'm going to do is make my pricing irresistible. So to own or control this 10-acre parcel that used to be owned by Jeffrey Broger, the famous real estate mogul, all you have to do is put a down payment of $2,500. And then I'll make it a car payment. Let's say $3.99 a month, 9% interest in the next 84 months. So it's a one-time sale. I'm going to get my money out on the down. I could go six, 10 months out. Then $3.99 a month, 9% interest. But Jeffrey, no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents. And because I'm not dealing with a tenant, I'm exempt from Dodd-Frank, RESPA, and the SAFE Act, all this onerous real estate legislation. So it's a simple game. Can we create enough of these land notes where our passive income exceeds our fixed expenses? And now we're working because we want to, not because financially we free. To. You're free. Hmm. Interesting. Fascinating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go play that back a couple of times and re-listen to it. So I hope that my listeners do too. That was a, a masterclass in, in land flipping. So I'm very curious on, on a couple of things that, that I'd like to dive in deeper on, if that's all right. Sure. Okay. So you mentioned this land that there's a lien on and it's out in Texas and maybe it's worth you know $10,000 for the lowest comparable. Are there, is there really land that's that cheap? There is. There's, there's land that you can get for $500. Now, Gosh. it's not land that you and I would want to own. Right. We're talking about two, three hours from the nearest city. I mean, this is rural, undeveloped mm -hmm. land. So think about that land that you drive by on the, on the highway. It's just miles and miles of raw land. Right. There's no services. There's nothing out there. Not for you and me. But mm -hmm. imagine if you are somebody that is like what we call a prepper or survivalist. You know, they're hoping for the best. They're preparing for the worst. It's perfect for them. Yep. People that don't like people, they love it. People that want to use it recreationally, 
They love it. I mean, there's a less for Amazon. Country. They want to put a 2 million square foot warehouse a couple, you know, an hour outside of a major city. Amazon, you know, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you know, some of this land is only limited by your imagination. I mean, think about yeah. you know, the Googles, the Amazons, the Apples, they need inexpensive raw land to put their server farms. So, right. you know, I've okay. never been stuck with a piece of land. Yeah. So, it's so very interesting. So, that first, I, I was confirming you weren't simplifying a larger deal, right? So that, that confirmed my first question. And now the second question, is this a situation where you're primarily on, on the podcast and you're helping to coach this process? Or are you acting a, a bit as like a capital fund where others can invest in, in you and give you the money to do this and then in some way split the, the profits? So I help everybody along the economic spectrum. So we have free training if you know, you're just at that point in your life where you just need to kind of climb out of wherever you're in financially. Uh, we have do-it-yourself training. We have training that is a group coaching. We have one-on-one training. But then we help rich people. So think your doctors or lawyers, people that have more money than time, they can invest with us as well. And we can make them wealthy. So really my whole purpose is to help everybody get out of what I call solo economic dependency, which means that they're personally not working. They're not making any money. W-2 job, freelancers, doctors, lawyers, engineers, it doesn't matter. If you have to be somewhere to to generate an income, that's, that's not ideal. Right. Makes sense. I love that. And very generous of you to offer free coaching all the way up to uh, more of a, a capital firm type of setup where uh, wealthy individuals with no time can invest and and see some returns on that money. So another question that I have, it's primarily focused around this whole land flipping concept. And with land flipping, inherently you mentioned it's separate from a lot of the restriction that goes into real estate transactions. And I, I would love for you to just touch on that one more time. Sure. So if you, let's say, own 10 homes or more, right? And you're going to rent them out as a landlord. You're now what the Dodd-Frank would call you a, an originator, or you would need an originator. So there's real estate legislation involved with housing, tenants, all across the board. Well, the land doesn't have any of that because we're not dealing with a tenant. So it only would come into play if someone's actually going to build a home. We don't deed the property over until they pay off their note, at which point they can't get a building permit. So it's not an issue. Mm, Love that. Makes sense. And it's been said that in real estate, money is made on the buy, not the sell. Correct. And in this case, you are getting the land at such an inexpensive buy that now you can even in what appears to be wholesale it to the the buyer on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, you know, the the neighbors, they're like, how is this so cheap? But you're already, number one, immediately getting your investment back. And number two, creating a cash flow schedule for years to come. Correct. I mean, our, our average margin is 300 to 1,000%. 300% on cash flips, but on terms, it's about 1,000% because time value of money. Wow. And you're not redeveloping the land, zoning it, doing any of that, right? No, I, I wrote a book called Dirt Rich. I can just afford the dirt. You know, those are fine things to do. It's just they're, I'm really risk averse. I mean, 80% of developers go under. So if you want to go ahead and, you know, play that game with the county, it's about a $400,000 risk that you're going to take. Now you can look, you get that property shovel ready for developer. Absolutely. You, you can make tremendous amount of money. Um, right. And, pe- and people do. But for me, that's the risk reward ratio doesn't make a lot of sense. And I tend to agree with you. It, it is a different game. You have to have contacts at the county, be able to skip lines, speed up you know, bidding proposals and, and speed up um, getting things approved and through zoning and this and that and getting plans approved. And like, it's, you have to kind of be able to go in the fast lane and skip the line. 
because you're just holding those carrying costs the whole time of like having this land and not doing anything with it. And then also the expenses of, you know, the engineers and all the people that you bring in to then get all that paperwork drafted and done right. And then to the city and then approved. And then, and depending on how pro growth that city is, oh my goodness, you could be in that process for years, right? Correct. And the whole time you're paying your, your taxes. Yeah. It's ca- so that's negative cash flow. Yeah. So I, I really love the simplicity of your concept. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So with that being said, in today's real estate space, where where do you see the future of the industry? It seems like this this concept has been successful for a very long time. And it, it also somewhat seems recession proof because you're not dealing depending on tenants. You're not necessarily de- dealing with interest rates because you're financing massive transactions and you're not really dealing with carrying costs and, you know, depreciation. Really, you're just holding the one thing that does consistently appreciate and you're quickly flipping it within like a 30 day cycle. So I don't want to answer your question for you, but, you know, where do you think the future of the industry is heading the next five, 10 years and how this strategy uh, holds up to it? Well, I'm glad you appreciate it. I mean, I actually have a, a podcast called the Best Passive Income Model Podcast. I don't, it's not current, but I used to have like guys like Grant Cardona on and I'd walk them through the model and my shtick would be, do I have the best passive income model? And I really think I do, but to Jeff Bezos and Amazon's point, they, you know, Jeff Bezos would ask himself the question of everything's going to change and everything is going to change. Well, what's not going to change? And what I don't think will change is I don't think people, I don't think, I think people always want a real asset. And I think they'll always want a deal. So as long as those two things remain true, I believe that the the land business will continue to grow. Now, you know, I remember getting started and coming from that investment banking background. I thought, well, there's these margins are unsustainable. More people come in, there'll be competition. You know, at the end of the day, maybe it's a thirty percent gross margin business, not three hundred to a thousand percent. And yet I've been proven wrong. And the reason I'm wrong is that the market is massive. So there is billions of acres of land available. And this is the most boring real estate niche out there. Like on HGTV or the DIY network, you're never going to see a show called Flip This Land. The before yeah. pictures are all land. The after pictures are all land. <laughs> and, and we can all wrap our head around the fact that everyone needs a place to live. Nobody needs raw land. Now, right. that being said, 99% of what we have in our lives, no one, we don't need either. People want it. True. Very interesting. And <laughs> I love the before and after analogy. Um, yeah. yeah. So when it comes to the success of what you've had with land flipping and this passive income model, I'm curious, what is the single most important action that you've taken on a daily basis that has attributed most to your success? Do you have a, um, a, a particular habit or an, or a, an action that's like a daily habit that you, that you think my, I'm going to ask my, my, Yeah, my daily habit is is just that it's consistently showing up every mm. single day. So the machine's been built, and we show up. I mean, we we make offers every day. We buy land every day. We market every day um, consistently. We don't like. Uh, it's just a machine. So yep. it works every day. Um, I would say for me personally, my favorite habit is just to meditate and to mm. be aware and um, enjoy the moment of it. So to not be lost in, you know, thought of, you know, something that happened in the past or, you know, daydreaming about the future, to be grounded in reality in every moment, I think has served me really well and kept me sort of level. Wow. Yeah, that's powerful. Uh, me- meditation and focusing on this moment, The Power of Now was a, a really big book for me that helped me understand the concept of this perpetual state of now and and how there is really no past or future. And now we're getting a little metaphysical, but uh, just that concept of really all you can do is be present in order to increase happiness, increase focus, increase productivity, and enjoy life more. So it's a it's a pretty big return for a simple concept. Yeah, no, it, yeah, exactly. It's huge because you know I, I talk about this in my book, but you know there was a point where it was just never enough. So if you're listening to this podcast and you've got a million dollars in the bank, you have a net worth of fifty million dollars, 
Well, then there's Jeffrey Broger, you know, Broger, who might have $2 million in the bank and a hundred million dollar net worth. And now you've got you've moved the goalpost. You feel less so, than yeah. And you feel less than so there, you know, you can always feel like it's never enough. In our culture sort of, you know, reinforces this all the time. And to drop out of that and watch those thoughts and see them for what they are, which are just thoughts, you can enjoy the journey of, you know, whether it's land investing or some other kind of, you know, whatever you're doing day to day, it just becomes much more enjoyable. It's like, it's like living a double life. You just, every moment's enhanced. I love that. So I'm interested to learn if currently you are more deal constrained or more capital constrained? Uh, We're deal constrained. So we have tons of capital and we're deploying the capital. The problem is that if we keep taking more capital, we can't deploy it fast enough in the sense that, you know, maybe we'll do a development deal. It takes time to put in the roads, do the survey, those types of things where we do bigger deals. And also we can't sell it, you know, that fast either. I mean, it takes time. So this is sort of a Goldilocks little niche in the sense that too much capital is a problem. That's why there's no hedge funds or private equity groups in them. You know, if I told you to go out and buy a billion dollars worth of land and the average price is $5,000, you'd be in trouble. Um, having not enough capital is also a problem as well. At, at a certain point, now we have people who start with $500 and they, and they can start generating income. But at a certain point, when you get to a certain level, having not enough is, is a problem as well. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But uh, you know, in, in today's space, I ask that question, I hear that a lot, that you're primarily deal constrained. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned this, this uh, unpaid tax lien where a tax lien or note investor is going to come up and you know, purchase the property. So that's obviously a lead generation source. For, for these types of land deals, right? You probably have s- some others and, and some amazing, you know, free training out there, of, of course, but I'm curious, you know, with the deal constraint that you just mentioned, you know, how are you overcoming that? Like, how are you consistently generating these opportunities so that you can feed the machine that you have that's ready to just field these deals and make offers? Yeah, so we just send out offers every day and, you know, are handling it. It's just that, you know, we're looking at what can our team handle, right? So at a, at a certain point, I could have a huge, huge team and we're doing due diligence on, you know, a hundred properties a day, right? But at the end of the day, you know, getting those to market, having salespeople sell those properties, it's, there's a constraint. It's also a, a matter of, you know, how much is enough, right? Like how big do I want to get to the point where it's not fun anymore if I'm managing you know, 500 people or something, you know, crazy. <laughs> so that, you know, right. I'm it's, very happy working, you know, my half hour a week in frontier properties. Right. Right. Hence where the, the coaching comes in. So you could still promote this message and educate and like help others out there that are interested, but it doesn't have to take your time. Right. You, you right. created this coaching to, to kind of live on and, and help people to build this business for themselves if they want to. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, this has been a a very stimulating and different conversation than usual. Usually we're talking about properties, you know, finance, uh, you know, multifamily syndications. And, and this is a very interesting topic to me because I understand the value of land and how it's actually the underlying appreciating asset and really any real estate transaction is the dirt. So uh, really appreciate having you on. Is there a question that I should have asked you or anything that you'd like to expand upon from earlier? No, I think it's so funny because you know multifamily is great. And I think this is a great gateway drug if you want to start getting into those, those bigger, sexier deals, for sure. But yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's, you know, it's a simple model, but it's not easy. Mm. Nothing, nothing worth doing is. It's like a, it's a volume business. Yeah, makes sense. Well, how can listeners contact you? Uh, the best place to go is thelandgeek.com. Thelandgeek.com. I love it. We'll link to that below. Mark Podolsky, everyone, thelandgeek.com. Check it out. And a very interesting take on passive investment and the possibilities of a low barrier to entry when it comes to real estate. You don't have to have 
20% down on a $800,000 home and then put a hundred thousand into it and then trying to flip it for a million. Uh, don't, you don't have to believe everything that's on HGTV, right? There are opportunities out there. As Mark said, you could get started for as little as $500 in 2022, $500 could barely buy you. It doesn't even buy you a computer nowadays. You could buy some land and flip it, right? It's crazy. Yeah. So I love that. Very interesting concept. Thank you so much for sharing it. Thanks, Jeffrey. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening. If you want to accomplish your real estate goals, then I highly suggest downloading my free ultimate real estate goal setting framework. The link is in the description of the show and it will help you break down your annual income goal into the amount of phone calls, appointments, or open houses you need in order to achieve that goal. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.